All right, ladies and gentlemen, when we look at section 5.1 lesson plans, the very first question asks us to find the inverse of the relation A equals the ordered pair 2, 5, and 3, negative 7. Now, first of all, remember that a relation in math is a collection of ordered pairs. This relation happens to be finite because there are only two ordered pairs. Okay, we're starting to work on what inverses are. And basically, two things I want you to know. If I'm given a relation and I want to find its inverse, the first thing I want you to know is how to write it. So, if this relation is called A, the way you write the inverse is you write it like this. And the way that's read is not a to the negative first power. You read this as a inverse, or the inverse of a. And the way you find the relation, the, the way you find the inverse of relation, is you take the ordered pairs and you interchange the domain with the range. So another way of saying that is the input becomes the output and the output becomes the input. Up here, 2 went in and 5 came out. Down here, 5 goes in and 2 comes out. Up here, 3 went in and negative 7 came out. Down here, negative 7 goes in and 3 comes out. So the way you write an inverse, if the original relation is called A, the way you write the inverse is A inverse by putting that negative one on top of the A, but it's called A inverse. And the way you form the inverse is you take every single ordered pair in it and you swap the X and Y. That's all you do. You don't take negatives. You just swap them. Okay, first question. Is A a function? Well, let's look back at A. 2 comma 5, 3 comma negative 7. Yes, it's a function. Remember, to decide if something is a function, you apply the vertical line test. And a vertical line, the vertical line test says, basically, a vertical line can never cross a graph more than once, which means an x value should never repeat. Well, 2 appears one time and 3 appears one time. So, is A a function? Yes. Next question. Is A inverse a function? Well, I don't know. Let's look at it. Here's A inverse. 5 is an x value, and it never repeats again. Negative 7 is an x value, and it never shows its ugly head again. So, yes. So here's what I've started with in this particular example. I started with a function whose inverse is also a function. Okay? And that happens sometimes. And in fact, that's the ideal situation. But basically here, here's a function. We started with a function, and the inverse also happened to be a function. 